Hello everyone! Welcome back to Electrotech 5. Has it ever crossed your mind what will happen if robots take over? With the rapid development and proliferation of robotic weapons, machines are starting to take the place of humans on the battlefield. At present, military officials generally say that humans will retain some level of supervision over decisions to use lethal force, but their statements often leave the possibility that robots could one day have the ability to make such choices on their own power. What will happen if these robots start to kill humans? We can't file a case against them, perhaps we can sue the company that made them, or will it be as easy as that if these robots will kill hundreds of people? A relatively small community of specialists has hotly debated the benefit and dangers of fully autonomous weapons. Military personnel, scientists, ethicists, philosophers, and lawyers have contributed to the discussion. They have evaluated autonomous weapons from a range of perspectives including military utility, cost, politics, and the ethics of delegating life and death situations to a machine. According to Philip Alston, the new and special rapporteur on extrajudicial summary or arbitrary executions. However, the rapid growth of these technologies, especially those with lethal capacities and those with decreased levels of human control, raise serious concerns that have been mostly entirely unexamined by human rights or humanitarian actors. The rules of distinction, proportionally, and military necessity are especially important tools for protecting civilians from the effects of war, and fully autonomous weapons would not be able to abide by those rules. Roboticists have proposed different mechanisms to promote autonomous weapons compliance with these rules. Options include developing an ability to process quantitative algorithms to analyze combat situations and strong artificial intelligence, which would try to mimic human thought. But even with such compliance mechanisms, Fully autonomous weapons would lack the human qualities necessary to meet the rules of international humanitarian law. These rules can be complex and entail subjective decision-making, and their observance often requires human judgment. For example, distinguishing between a fearful civilian and a threatening enemy combatant requires a soldier to understand the intentions behind a human's actions, something a robot could not do. In addition to that, fully autonomous weapons would likely contravene the Martens Clause, which prohibits weapons that run counter to the dictates of public conscience. By eliminating human involvement in the decision to use lethal force in armed conflict, fully autonomous weapons would undermine other non-legal protections for civilians. First, robots would not be restrained by human emotions and the capacity for compassion, which can provide an important check on the killing of civilians. Emotionless robots could therefore serve as tools of repressive dictators seeking to crack down on their own people without fear their troops would turn on them. While proponents argue robots would be less apt to harm civilians as a result of fear or anger, emotions do not always lead to irrational thinking. In fact, a person who identifies and empathizes with another human being, something a robot cannot do, will be more reluctant to harm that individual. The first problem of misidentification. When selecting a target, will autonomous weapons be able to distinguish between hostile soldiers and 12-year-olds playing with toy guns, or between civilians fleeing a conflict site and insurgents making a tactical retreat? The problem here is not that machines will make such errors and humans won't. It's that the difference between human error and algorithmic error is like the difference between mailing a letter and tweeting. The scale, scope, and speed of killer robot system ruled by one targeting algorithm deployed across an entire continent could make misidentifications by individual humans like a recent US drone strike in Afghanistan seem more like mere rounding errors by comparison. Autonomous weapons expert Paul Shar uses the metaphor of the runaway gun to explain the difference. A runaway gun is a defective machine gun that continues to fire after a trigger is released. The gun continues to fire until the ammunition is depleted because, so to speak, the gun doesn't know it is making an error. Runaway guns are extremely dangerous but fortunately they have human operators who can break the ammunition link or try to point the weapon in a safe direction. Autonomous weapons by definition have no such safeguard. The problem is not just that when AI systems fail, they fail in bulk. It is that when they fail, their makers often don't know why they did and therefore how to correct them. 
The black box problem of AI makes it impossible to imagine morally responsible development of autonomous weapon systems. Meanwhile, human rights and humanitarian organizations are racing to establish regulations and prohibitions on such weapons development. Without such checks, foreign policy experts warn that disruptive autonomous weapon technologies will dangerously destabilize current nuclear strategies, both because they could radically change perceptions of strategic dominance, increasing the risk of preemptive attacks, and because they could become combined with chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons themselves. After hearing all those, are you still looking forward to see the future full of robots? Share your thoughts with us in the comment sections below, and we look forward to hear from you. Like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications from our latest videos. Once again, this is Electrotech 5, signing out.